Hey, this is Kathleen from oldworldfarmhouse.com. This video is about using milk paint on walls. Milk paint is one of the, or if not the oldest way of making paint known to man. It's a, um, casein is a milk protein and that's what's in there that makes the paint bind to things. In recent years, it's gotten prominent with a lot of DIY bloggers as a way to paint in distress furniture to make it look antique. But it has lot, it has other applications as well. And when we were thinking about what to do with this room, um, I was really intrigued as to how it might work on the walls because underneath all of this gnarly old wallpaper, the walls were plaster and they had never been painted. And um, I had read that and I know from using milk paint that it sinks into raw wood, it, it behaves like a stain. And I had read somewhere too that because it's got uh, limestone in it, over time it gets harder, it's almost like this stone. So instead of just sitting on top of whatever you've painted, it's like really becomes part of the wall. And I thought that sounded really cool. And also our house is quite old, and so it is conceivable that they might have used milk paint in here somewhere and it would be in that way, historically accurate. Um, so what I did was I researched different kinds of milk paint and I found that the Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company actually makes a special uh, finish, they call it their farmhouse finishes. Farmhouse finishes and it's actually specially formulated for walls, which means that you don't have to worry about it flaking off the way that uh, traditional milk paint can. Um, it doesn't always adhere that great to everything. Well, some they've done something with this farmhouse finishes, so you don't have to add the extra bond that you would add to traditional milk paint to make sure it's stuck to everything. If you didn't want the chippy look, um, this is already formulated, so you don't have to do that. So I went ahead and I ordered um, two gallons of this stuff. It comes in a powder form. And it costs $65.75 for a gallon of the uh, Farmhouse Finishes paint, and um, it comes in, the, in a box, it comes in a powdered form. And it covers 288 square feet, according to the box. Another great reason to use milk paint and this Farmhouse Finishes formula, um, according to the spec sheets on their website, it's the same as regular milk paint. It's biodegradable, it's totally VOC and HAP free. So it has no odor. When you put it on it, it kind of smells a little bit milky, but then once it's dry, there's no smell at all. And the milky smell is, is really kind of cool. It's just a very natural smell. So if you're concerned about painting while you're pregnant or you just don't want to breathe in icky paint fumes, this is a great option. When I got the two gallons, I emptied them into this clean plastic container just in case the dye lots were slightly different and I mixed all of the dry pigment together. The Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company has a lot of colors and these are all available in their regular milk paint or also in their farmhouse finishes if you're interested in the walls. I am gonna use this color Federal Blue on my walls. Um, I think the Providence color and the Summer Cottage color are also really beautiful. Um, the company was started in the 70s by people who were inspired by the colors they saw at Colonial Williamsburg and a couple other of those old historic um, villages on the East Coast is what I understand. So these are all colors that are pulled from actual um, historic villages and their colors that people would have been using back in the day. If you're considering using milk paint on any walls in your home, I hope this video helps you make a decision about whether it would be a, the right fit for you. Let's get started. Bring cup here, four and a half cups, 36 ounces is what it holds. And I'm going to scoop that out and I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in this bucket. And then I'm going to go fill this up with water. So I've got my pigment in the bucket. It's a color called Federal Blue. And here is my 
equal parts of water and I'm just, I'm gonna pour that in. I'm gonna stir it around with a paint stir stick. With milk paint, um, you can tend to get these little clumps. It, it's hard to get out every single little clump, kind of like pancake batter. Sometimes you get these like, you know, you see how those dry clumps are. So it's gonna, it would take forever to, to sit here and do that with the stir stick. So what I'm gonna do, I have this old immersion blender that's broken. I mean, the plastic broke off because my kids knocked it off the counter. <laughs> so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna turn this into my paint mixer just cause it's lightweight and that way I don't have to get out the drill bit and all the rest of that. <laughs> this blue farmhouse finishes milk paint federal blue in a ratio of one part water to one part paint i used this beat up old um, immersion blender and now i'm going to get started painting the wall this paint is really watery and splatters a lot as you see i've already got it all over my face and hands and i am actually a very neat painter with latex um, it's tricky to keep it off the baseboards, so um, I have been keeping a damp cloth or baby wipes handy so I can wipe it off right away. I don't want to tape my baseboards because I hate taping. I think that taping gives you a false sense of security because paint can always get like underneath the tape and then you take the tape off and you have these nasty surprises. So I'd rather just see what I'm doing. You know, I just cut in just like I would with regular paint. Um, but I start up here because it does tend to drip down. See, and right there I've got a splash already, but I just wiped it up with my rag. And then I just keep on from there. Okay, and then once I've cut in, I'll take this one and you definitely want to make sure, just pr I've, just, I've been pressing it against the sides of the bucket to get as much water off as I can. I hold it like this and I just go every which way. And you can see it covers um, really quickly and it's actually uh, quite a bit of fun. To edge in with the milk paint, I just used a regular and angled trim brush but then I did not want to roll the paint because it is so watery and splotchy. So what I did was I bought this brush from Amazon. I'll link to it below. I can't remember offhand exactly the brand. It is, I think called a block brush and it's about six inches wide and maybe, um, you know, an inch and a half thick. And I just used this to cover the walls and it's actually great fun and it goes really quickly. And you can see how drippy the paint is, but you can catch your drips better and easier than with a roller. And you just go in every which direction and you can see it goes really quickly. Honestly, I think it goes just as fast, if not faster than a roller would. I'm gonna show you my technique with this brush just up close. I mean, you know, and then let me show you since I wasn't paying very much attention. I wasn't being as careful because I was trying to film it. Look what happened. Okay. So this is definitely a drawback to this paint. It's much easier to control for that happening or not happening with latex, but I've just been wiping it off and I do, I am going to paint the trim last. Usually I paint it first, but because of how messy this paint is, I decided to do the walls first. And then again here, um, as you're painting, just be very mindful that you're gonna have drips and be mindful to catch them before they start dripping down. Now 
This is what the walls are looking like after one coat of milk paint. So obviously they need another coat, but the coverage is pretty good. And then um, over here, this wall with the two lights on it, and you can see compare the contrast. This wall is done. It has two coats already. You can see there's variegation in the color slubs and marks up close. And it's just sunk into the wall like a stain. And then here's, by contrast, one coat over there. One coat on the chimney breast and two coats on the wall over there to its left. Here is what the room looks like with two coats of farmhouse finishes from old fashioned milk paint, federal blue. This is two coats all the way around. It's got, it's got a lot of texture, both from being brushed on and the fact that the plaster underneath is rough. Um, it's gone on like I hoped it would. It's like really sunk into the plaster instead of just sitting on top the way a latex would. And I, I do like I had been thinking of perhaps sealing it with hemp oil to bring out the richness and luster of the blue, but I think actually I'm happy with it as is. Um, as I said in a previous video, these plaster walls are rough. They need a lot of repair and we did not make them perfectly smooth, but I think that the sort of natural and raw quality of the paint enhances the rough walls and it works. It works. I like it. I'm pleased with it. There's a little spot here where I'm gonna to have to sand because there's even some drip marks, but you know, that happens even with latex paint at times. I do like the fact that it's a little mottled looking. I, I did put on two coats and it's not uniform. There's a, a mottled appearance to it. If you're interested in this kind of natural look for your walls, I would say go for it. It's a little harder to handle than just a latex paint and you have to mix it up and um, you definitely want to mix it up with something like a, a paint mixer on a drill or a little immersion blender because it, it does tend to clump in a powder and you don't want that. But I, I, it's not that much harder to use. I say that if you like the look or you have your heart set on a particular color then go for it thanks for watching this video if you liked it if it was helpful please let me know give me a thumbs up down below this is kathleen from oldworldfarmhouse.com thanks